Hey guys, Tom here again from SynthHacker.com and welcome back to another tutorial for Extra Record Serum. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at making a really dark kind of tech house uh, chord stab sound. Really, really cool sound, really dark, quite different to the stuff that I usually do tutorials on, so I like it. Um, yeah, it's got like really kind of like an old school tech house kind of vibe. Um, really, you could use it in a lot of um, more modern genres as well to kind of give your track more of like a dark kind of feel to it. Um, and yeah, some really, really cool techniques to go over in this video, so hopefully you'll uh, learn a lot. So let's go ahead and initialize the patch first of all. And as always guys, um, as I mentioned in every video, uh, these videos are sponsored by my website which is synthhacker.com. If you haven't uh, already, go ahead and check it out. I've got tons of serum presets that I've, I've created for you guys. Um, obviously all handcrafted by me for a variety of genres. Um, and yeah, thanks in advance if you decide to purchase them. It really, really um, helps support me in the channel. And at the minute I actually have a sale on the Serum Mega Pack, which actually contains all the presets I've ever created. Um, over 600 presets. Sets, I believe including that so definitely go ahead and check that out over at synthhacker.com or click the link in the description below uh, but without further ado let's begin making this tech house stab sound so we're going to make sure that uh, both oscillator A and B are both switched on and um, we're going to be using quite basic uh, waveforms um, now really you can get away with using a lot of different waveforms for this sound but uh, personally for me the Waveforms that I like the best, uh, wavetables that I like the best were kind of the more um, simple, kind of rounded off, less harsh uh, wavetables. So for oscillator A, I uh, went on basic shapes and just left the wavetable position all the way to the left. And then for oscillator B, I believe I used the analog BD sign uh, uh, wavetable, um, which I kind of found worked the best for me. Um, and this is these are both really really similar. They're both just um, sine waves But this one on the right is a little bit more kind of imperfect if you will um, So what we're gonna do though to make it the sound a little bit more interesting is actually something that I did in The keys video that I posted not long ago the key tutorial that I did for caribou's uh, track can't do without you Definitely go ahead and check that out by the way if you haven't already it's one of my favorite tutorials that I've created um, and what we did was take these quite basic waveforms and then we just use, manipulated them using the uh, bend plus warp mode. Um, this is really cool because it gives you a lot of control, like really, really tight control over how um, the waveform sounds. You can like play the sound back and move this until you find a timbre that you're really kind of happy with. So what we're going to do, we're going to leave this as a sine wave, we're going to push the bend uh, plus minus all the way to the right, and then we're going to do exactly the same for oscillator B, we're going to use bend plus minus, and keep this, I think I had it not all the way left, just to opened out a little bit, um, just to kind of round it off a little bit more, and then what we did was... Um, push this up an octave, so it's an octave above oscillator A, and then to give it that kind of old school chord stab sound, what we actually did was pitch this up three semitones. So at the minute we just have this. So you can kind of hear that gives it that kind of like dark vibe to it. It's really, really cool because it's not actually in any specific scale, um, which is, I don't know, something that must have originated from uh, when people first like started making like dance and electronic music um, and people like create these patches with weird, um, you know, like semitones and, and stuff like that. Um, and then just played it on a keyboard, which kind of didn't fit in 20 scales. Really, really cool and gives it that kind of like dark element, which I really like. Um, next, we're going to dive into the noise oscillator just to dirty the sound up a little bit. Obviously, for this kind of genre, you're going to want a little bit of grit. Um, you don't want it to sound like absolutely perfect. Um, and one way to just add a little bit of grit or a bit of texture is using the, the noise oscillator. I'm actually going to go into, I believe it's organics, or it might, what else was it? Might not have been organic, actually. Let me have a look. Analog. Yeah. So go into analog and select uh, ARP circuit. ARP circuit. 
Uh, this is um, this was a noise sauce that I really really liked that I think really went kind of naturally with the sound and gave it kind of like an organic sound. Um, and then what we're going to do is just set up envelope two here, just to give it quite a sharp, um, quite a sharp decaying um, feel to it, right? Um, so we're going to give this about seven point seven milliseconds of attack. Um, give it a little bit of delay, no sustain, and then a little bit of release as well. Something like um, something like 200, something like that. And then we're going to drag and drop it onto the uh, level here. Bring this right down, and then we just have this kind of like layer over the top. So really, really cool. Just adds, you know, that extra little bit of texture. It almost sounds like a, a, a like a percussive element. Really, really cool. Um, next, we're gonna go into envelope one and set up like kind of a similar envelope. We're just gonna bring the the sustain right down. Have like a little bit of decay, and we're just gonna soften up the the start of the uh, sound a little bit. We don't want it to be kind of too sharp at the beginning. We want it to sound like quite soft for for a stub sound. Um, we're going to give it a little bit of release as well. This is obviously the envelope for the amplitude envelope for the the the, the envelope sorry for the amplitude of the whole sound. So we want it to have a little bit of release, but because it is quite a short stabby sound, we don't want too much. Um, something around 270 uh, milliseconds, something like that. And then next, we're just going to dive into the filter section. We're going to select the low pass 12 dB filter. Bring the cutoff down a bit, make sure that we're rooting both oscillators through the filter. And then we're going to use the envelope we set up in uh, envelope 2 to modulate the cutoff here and just bring this down a little bit. So you can hear that gives it a lot of the characteristic that we're looking for. We're also going to push it a little bit by driving the filter and also this fat control. Really, really cool effect. Just kind of gives it like a nice bit of warmth, a nice little bit of distortion. Really, really cool. Um, and next, what we're going to do is head into uh, the effects section. Quite a lot of effects. Um, there's quite a lot of effects that I put on this sound. We first of all put the hyper dimension effect on. Uh, we didn't use the hyper section, just the dimension expander. So make sure you bring the, the mix down. Uh, bring the size right down, but then the mix up. And you know, it just kind of expands it a little bit, makes it sound uh, quite like a bit bigger. Really cool. Um, next thing we're going to do is add some distortion. We're going to use um, just simple uh, tube distortion. We're going to click post and then move these, this slider up here so it's, it's fully high passed. Just bring this peak down a little bit as well. Uh, bring the drive down a little bit and the mix up and this is again is just going to add a nice little bit of warmth to the sound Really cool um, next we added some chorus um, For this this isn't a too extreme effect. We brought the mix down a little bit and um, this is kind of up to you This is kind of the, towards the end of um, the kind of effects chain really is Kind of personal preference, what you want to add. I really liked the sound of chorus on on this, so I I added it. Really, really nice. Just kind of thickens it up a little bit. It's really, really cool. Um, next, we're just going to add a reverb. You can either use Serum's reverb or you can use your own if you've got like a preference. Um, personally, I I'm not too too big a fan on Serum's reverb. It's all right, but um, I, I really like this. There's, there is one advantage though of using Serum's reverb and it's that you can automate it within itself and that's actually something that I did um, for this sound. I'll, I'll quickly show you what I mean. So what I did was um, increase the high cut a little bit just to cut off some of the, the harsher high frequencies, raise the low cut a little bit just to cut out some of the muddy frequencies and brought the mix right down. And then what I did was set up a third envelope to control the dry wet of the mix and this was a really really cool effect. Essentially what I did was increase the attack of envelope 3, straighten it out a little bit uh, and then what I did was bring the sustain right down 
I had the the decay at about 500 seconds between yeah something like that and uh, like no no hardly any release just like about 10 or 7 milliseconds something like that and then what happens when you apply this envelope to the mix amount there's kind of like a delay between hearing the actual sound and then the reverb which sounds really really cool it has this really cool effect So that's without, and then this is with. I really, really like that effect. Um, it's just really, really cool. Um, and definitely play around. Um, a lot of times, uh, well, a lot, a lot of the patches that I've seen that other people have created um, you know, people, you know, automate a lot in the main synth, you know, like the wavetable position, filters, you know, noise, whatever. Um, but a lot of the times people forget that all the parameters within the effects are actually automatable as well. Or you can modulate them all, right? Um, and you can achieve some really cool, interesting stuff um, by modulating the effects, like, like in this example here. And then finally, um, just to clean up the sound, what I did was just add a high pass filter at the end of the signal chain. Typically, you know, chord, um, a chord stab sound would probably be over the top of a bass element in the mix. Um, I mean, in this, you, it'd probably be quite an understated bass, but you still want to, like, save um, a bit of room in the mix for for that low end. So just add in a, a nice high pass filter, um, high pass EQ. Sorry, at the end, um, it's just a great way to kind of clean up the sound. And that covers the sound. Really cool, really dark um, sound. Sorry this video was a bit long, but there was a lot to cover and I kind of wanted to explain everything. Um, definitely play around with different wavetables, different filters. Um, although I would probably stick to a low pass filter, but maybe try some of the other low pass filters. Um, definitely play around with some some of the effects, and you know, if you don't like something, then take it out. You know, like this, all this stuff isn't set in stone. You know, if you don't like the chorus, then take it out. You know, if you want to try out a different distortion, definitely go for it. You know, just experiment around with it a little bit. So this has been a really really fun tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I really like these type of sounds as well as doing you know the more kind of commercial sounds. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. Subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with new tutorials that I release and again this video is sponsored by my website which is synthhacker.com definitely go ahead and check out the serum patches I've got up on there and again there's a sale on at the minute on this serum mega pack which you guys should definitely take uh, advantage of there's over 600 presets for serum in there so yeah thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video